Hi. So I'm back with a video vlog after a very long time. Here I am in Old San Juan in Puerto Rico on the second day of 2014. And of course, first of all, I wish all of you a very happy 2014. The reason why I felt inspired to do this vlog from here is because of an interesting question that, you know, has suddenly sprung up. And that's the question, why are Puerto Ricans considered really the happiest people in the world? And that's coming, not from me, but I do feel that even, you know, as I wander the streets of um, Old San Juan or sit in an awesome coffee shop like this, where poetry and coffee blends, I feel a sense of comfort, even though I'm a tourist and a stranger, this is the first time I'm here in Puerto Rico, I feel a sense of being included without really knowing why or how that's happening. I feel a sense of relaxation, though there are so many tourists here, it should have been a stressful touristy place, but it isn't. So then I sort of wanted to look at what is it about Puerto Rico? And that led me to the beginning of the story, which is the World Happiness Report. Puerto Rico has for a while now always been at the top of the World Happiness Report. So at one time, maybe about seven, eight years ago, Puerto Rico was considered the happiest country in the world. In the World Happiness Report that we saw in 2013, it still appears within the first 30 countries out of a total of say 156 countries that were part of this report. And it's not just Puerto Rico. Interestingly, all the Latin American countries really do very well in terms of happiness or subjective well-being. In spite of the fact that in terms of material prosperity, so you know if you look at measures, traditional measures of uh, a country's health such as the per capita income, these countries are not on top. There are many other countries that are more prosperous. But whether it's Brazil or Mexico or Panama or Argentina or Chile or Puerto Rico, all of them are up there in the first 30. Whereas countries like China is at 93 on the list, India 111. We are all down there in spite of the fact that we may be economically more prosperous. So what is it that makes all these countries so much happier? If I look at what or how happiness has been defined in the report, they are saying that, you know, these countries are happier because of the presence of factors such as the feeling that they can count on somebody in times of trouble. Social support, in other words. Or the fact that there's a perception that corruption doesn't impede their daily life. Or the feeling that they have the freedom to make life choices, that they feel there is equitable access to income, to health care, to education, and also there is a degree of material prosperity. It's not that that doesn't matter. It is important. The fact that generosity or altruism exists in the culture, all of these things have been rated as being very much present by all these countries. So as sort of, you know, Jeffrey Sachs, one of the editors of the World Happiness Report in 2013 and a noted economist, as he says, the US has tripled its per capita income since 1960. But the happiness needle has not budged. While other countries, such as Latin America, have pursued specific policies that have led to gain in happiness, even though their per capita income is not as high. So, what I started to think about is, what about user experience? As user experience professionals, 
Should we be looking at these factors that make the offline reality of people in different countries feel different? Some countries so much happier than others. Does it mean that when we create user experience, we need to keep these factors in mind? So would, for example, users in India or China, countries that are so much more unhappy than, say, Latin American countries or some of the Scandinavian countries which are right up on top, would user experience for users in these countries have to be done differently? Do users in unhappier countries demand or expect more from their online experiences? Do we as user experience professionals have to overcompensate when we create online experiences for the relatively unhappier countries in order to make up for what is lacking in their offline physical reality? What would a world happiness report for online experience across the world look like? So these are questions that I think would be very important for us to ponder over and to get insights on as a community, as a profession in this year, when more and more governments are paying attention to creating specific policies to increase subjective well-being and happiness. So that's it for me. Thank you.